Um, Simon Mannering, I'm an advertising creative who has a company called Mannering Creative. We specialize in brand triage, which means when a brand is in trouble, whether it's a corporation or it's a non-profit or it's an individual, people come and you help solve their messaging problems. I started, I went to, well I almost went to the advertising school that they have called Award in Sydney, Australia, mm -hmm. but I kind of um, started an agency called Saatchi in Sydney, did an internship there and then worked at Mojo, didn't really know what I was doing and got fired, then went and worked at DDB and then went off to London and, and now to the States. So it was just starting off in Australia, not really understanding even what advertising or copywriting was and then just, just letting the type A mm -hmm. dynamic just engage fully, full force body and off I went. My filter is me. I actually don't sit there consciously and go, what am I trying to create for the brand? Mm -hmm. I'm hoping to that I've articulated what the brand um, is as a function of who I am. So I just respond to what interests me in terms of where my interest is in the industry and, and the world at large. So I couldn't actually break it down for you, but there are many tech things that I don't tweet out while I tweet, tweet out other tech things. There are many ad industry things that I do or don't tweet out. Um, if I had to distill it down to anything, you'll see on my blog, it's the business of social transformation. So, and that took me a long time to get there. It used to be creative communications for a changing world, it used to be this, it used to be that, because I was trying to do the same process that I do for my brands, articulate what I'm about. And the business of social transformation is meant in both senses of social, social media, but also social transformation out there. And it's an effective way, I think, of collapsing the non-profit for-profit world which I see increasingly going on. So the non-profit world is all about social transformation yet for a long time it's been marginalized as kind of you know foundation work or non-profit work and it's PSAs and celebrities and all that sort of thing while the for-profit is much more aggressive and competitive and so on that's real business but actually they're coming together now and I'm very encouraged by that because I believe that more and more brands more and more CEOs and of course, more and more consumers realize that we have to serve the greater good more if we're going to survive, if we're going to profit, and in fact, if we're going to enjoy prosperity, all of us. So that's, what, that's the, direction, the direction I'm headed. One of the many definitions of creativity is that two otherwise unrelated things are brought together to create a third. Mm -hmm. So what fascinates me about all the RSS feeds and all these different things going on in different regions is what happens if I stuff my brain with that, 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 and that? what will that lead to? Or if I work on a beer account and then a non-profit account and then work in the social media space, what cross-pollination will that create? So while I could easily tire of a specific thing itself, I never tire of that dynamic. So a lot of my time is wasted. I mean, you know, some things that don't translate to anything, but a lot of things do lead to something else and they always contribute to who you are anyway. I am excited to think through and I'm not sure what my thoughts are yet, but what mobile community will look like. When you take, I mean, there's so many dimensions to this. There's traditional media. Now there's online, digital, social media, whatever you want to call it. And all the permutations of that and all the different platforms and apps that are out there. Now what happens if you take that whole circus and take it on the road? And everyone gets their own circus and everyone is interrelating with everybody else, each with their own circuit and their own point of attention. They're all looking at a different act and a different act and a different act. They're all talking about it. I think it's absolutely fascinating. The thing actually that it truly excites me about that is given the capacity to communicate and connect through all these tools, what can we achieve in a positive sense? What social transformation can we bring about? I almost feel like it was a gold rush or a land grab the way capitalism was practiced for a long time and then you know that was seriously questioned after September last year and suddenly consumers you know power is again being democratized out to consumers and what's going to happen if shared values and the greater good suddenly start to play a more important role in business for profit business which is still beholden to the shareholder but also depends for its profits on the consumer who's suddenly engaged in the greater good of all that is, and I'm writing a book to that effect, and it's, it's very exciting for me. That's the thing that I get really excited about. Well, there's so many dimensions to that. I mean, firstly, there's personal. And I, I think, I can't deny that everyone has to prove something to themselves when they go out into the marketplace. I'd love to think we could all just say, hey, I don't care if I fail, and just go for it. Yeah. But you need to, 
somehow prove to yourself and your peers that you're good enough and then you feel you give yourself permission to be who you already are but you just need that permission in the first place so that's one dimension um, secondly people always will have a difference of opinion um, I've heard people even after the work is made and won all the awards or been really celebrated by people who are good in their field still say I don't like that stuff but that's just their personal preference so there's always going to be a contrast there as well on the professional front, um, you are lucky if you're in a place that lets you fail. Most people do it despite the place. <laughs> but um, Wyden encourages it and I have seen several examples of that but I have also been in the room when someone very high up on the creative side and someone very high up on the client side both discussed quite actively that they need to make mistakes occasionally. They need to play big, place big bets because it's only by taking those risks that you discover something fantastic and there is absolutely no guarantees. So I think there are inevitably some failures even at an agency like Wyden but I think there's a very very high aesthetic and taste level and they vet themselves very very carefully and they take very considered risks because it's obviously you know working with the client's money and the client's goals and so on but yeah, there's failures. So hopefully you'll be in a place that allows you to fail. But you need to fail because you've tried, not because you didn't. And sometimes the difference is hard to see. But if you've really tried and failed, you have nothing to be ashamed of. But if you didn't try and you just dialed it in and you failed, then that's just not good enough. Constantly, at time, it's called the 20s and 30s. Do you doubt your abilities? That's what I mean. I mean, you constantly doubt your abilities and uh, invariably creatives are also competitive animals. They're always looking at the person next to them and sort of, well, what are they doing? And because it kind of is fed into, or it's fed by the whole award structure, you know, which is a pecking order of who's done what. But I think by nature, a lot of creatives are really competitive as well. Um, I have failed so many times. I've been fired. I um, have done work that just wasn't up to par. Um, but I very, very rarely, uh, to a rule fail because I didn't try so in my mind it's never really a failure but I've done as much if not more crappy work than anybody else out there yeah. you know th I found it's really hard particularly as a junior and a sort of a middleweight when you go in and show ideas and they keep getting killed and they should be killed they're not good you're not it's not there yet but you start doubting yourself mm -hmm. and you're terrified and terror stricken and I made the mistake of trying to overthink things for a long time I could think my way through this when really <clears throat> you need to let the brain do what it does and it often does that best when it's not thinking about something so you put the information in you kind of have a sense of the solution that you're after and you let it do its work and then you trust your gut trusting your own gut is so undervalued and to explain that, so often I've gone in with a few different ideas, some of which seem to be smart advertising, and some which are kind of like, listen, I just thought I'd share this with you as well. And a creative director or someone will gravitate and say, that's fantastic. And you wish that you'd been a little bit more behind yourself on that. Mm -hmm. And that's when you discover, wow, I really should embrace or have confidence in my own thinking more. Um, but you have to earn that confidence. And um, I'll, I'll share something else, which is, while I was working in agencies, inevitably you measured yourself against others in the agency and the success of that brand or product launch and so on. When I went freelance, in some ways I got a lot better at what I did because I couldn't really get fired. Do you know what I mean? The, the risk was less in a sense mm -hmm. and I gave myself more permission. Do whatever you can to work through that necessary period of permission earning as quickly as possible because everything that the good agencies are looking for and everything you need to be an extraordinary success you have already you just got to get out of your own way and some people have to win enough awards to clear those obstacles some people need to have a mentor or some people need to have an industry luminary say you're good some people need public accolades some people need an article in you know ad week or advertising age or creativity you know we need public approval but really it's all inside you and the sooner you kind of give expression to that, the sooner the industry, the brand, the agency that will resonate with that will emerge.